What is up, everybody? Welcome to the MMA Engine. These are my DFS core plays for UFC Vegas 53. We have Rob Font going against Marlon Vera. Last week did very well on the core plays. Had Preston Parsons, had Jessica Andrade, Mark Andre Barrio, and should have been 4 for 4 because I also had Alexander Romanov. Chase Sherman pulls out after Locke, which is a DFS player's worst nightmare, especially when it's the best play on the slate. So, we get it back this week. I'm hoping Chase Sherman fights, and if he does not want to fight, please do it before lock. But uh, we're going to get into the core plays here, my favorite four plays here on the entire slate. Um, and then, as always, if you guys can please leave a like on the video, subscribe here to the MMA Engine. Let's keep growing the channel. Lots of content throughout the week. Make sure you are subscribed so you not miss it. So we'll talk about Alexander Romanov once again, two weeks in a row, and I hope he fights because this guy is not only probably the best play of the week by... A mile, especially considering this 9K range is nothing like last week's 9K range. Um, he's probably the best play of the year as well. I mean, he's minus 2,500 on the money line. You will not see that in a very, very, very long time, more than likely. Um, he has wrestling upside. Um, it just The fight doesn't go to decision is minus 800. You never see that. The under one and a half rounds is minus 280. Minus 300 on some books, you never see that. You know, Alexander Romanov should come out here. He should take Sherman down, and he should finish him shortly after. Sherman has been finished four to or five times. Sherman, you know, has been submitted. He's been knocked out. And, you know, Sherman coming in on short notice. I know we got that extra week to prepare, but, you know, he could prepare for the next 10 years, and he's not going to be prepared to face Alexander Romanov here. Um, I like Romanov here, 9,600. Not a hot take, but I'm going to have a ton of Romanov. Actually only had like 75% last week. I'm actually going to have more this week because this 9K range this week is just kind of brutal. So I'm going to have a ton of Romanov, and if Sherman pulls that stun again, I just, I'll just i be I will be very upset. But we can't rely on that. I think this fight does happen. I think Romanov does smash and finish this fight within the very first round. Uh, moving on to the next core play, we have Grant Dawson, 8,700. Yeah, really like me some Grant Dawson here. This guy averages 90.6 DraftKings points. Um in his entire career, and if he would have got the win in his last fight against Glenn, it'd be even higher than that. Obviously, he has takedown upside. This guy is a relentless wrestler. Um, if he does not get the first takedown, he'll go for a second, he'll go for a third. He has no problem going out there attempting 10, 15 takedowns if he really needs to. I don't think he'll really need to here because uh, Jared Gordon has a 50% takedown defense, which just seems like a complete recipe for disaster against a guy like Grant Dawson who's going to be willing to try to take you down and try to take you down a lot. And you have Gordon, who's stuffing takedowns half the time. Like, that does not really seem uh, seem good for me there. So I like Dawson there, 8,700. Um, he has some control time upside as well. When Dawson does get you down, you typically do not get up. And I th also think he has sneaky finish upside. Grant Dawson, a very good finisher. Gordon finishing all his losses. Maybe a TKO could be on the table. A submission on the table as well. I think Grant Dawson does bounce back from his draw in his last fight. I think it's a really good matchup. Um, and I think Dawson, you know, puts up a big score with takedowns and control time there. And a, again, a possible sneaky finish. Uh, Gina Mazzani, 8,700. Never thought I would have Gina Mazzani on a core plays video, but here we are. And I think this she will be somewhat low owned. I don't think many people are going to play her because it is Gina Mazzani, but I was actually really impressed with Gina Mazzani's numbers. She averages nearly five takedowns per 15 minutes. And not only that, um, she's actually completing her takedowns at a 58% accuracy. And, you know, maybe it wouldn't be as impressive if it was like a two, three fight sample. But no, this is a seven fight sample for Gina Mazzani. So she's not only going for takedowns, getting takedowns, but she's getting them at a very, very high clip. So I like that, especially against Shanna Young, who just struggles with the ground game. Like when Shanna Young's losing, she's getting taken down. She's giving up dominant positions. She's getting submitted. She's getting TKO. Like, Shanna Young is not great on the mat. Shanna Young isn't really great on the feet. I'm honestly not sure what Shanna Young is good at outside of being, you know, tough and, and having cardio, and those can go a long way, and maybe it does here. But, you know, Gina Mazzani should, you know, be competitive on the feet, and just when she gets the fight down to the mat, I think she has tons of takedown and control them upside. And just like Grant Dawson, I think sneaky finish upside as well. We have seen, you know, Shanna Young finish before by fighters like Sarah Alpar, Stephanie Egger. I think Mazzani has what it takes to get the fight down to the mat and finish it as well at semi-low ownership, you got to imagine. And then finally, um, Daniel Da Silva, 
8,200. Again, another guy I don't think is going to be overly high owned, but I really love the price tag here at 8,200. This is a guy that is a killer be killed fighter, has a 100% finish rate in both his wins or losses. He's never seen a third round, and if you watch this guy fight, you can definitely see why this guy goes after it. Um, outside of his opponent in Francisco Figueredo, who does the complete opposite, opposite of going after it, Francisco Figueredo is averaging less than two significant strikes per minute thus far against guys like Malcolm Gordon and Jerome Rivera. Jerome Rivera and Malcolm Gordon both won the third round against Francisco Figueredo, which is you know very terrifying because I do think Daniel Da Silva is probably going to be better than both those guys, especially Jerome Rivera. Malcolm Gordon, I do think is good, just has that chin issue, but you know, Daniel Da Silva, he's dangerous everywhere the fight goes. He's dangerous on the feet. He's very dangerous on the map. Leaves a black belt in BJJ. Um, should have some very finish, early finish upside as well. I think he's going to come out there. I think he's going to go all out at Figueredo, and um, I think he can get him out of there early. So um, if it does, if he does not get him out of there early, I think over the course of three rounds, he will be the more active fighter. You're going to have Da Silva, who's going to do things, whereas Francisco Figueredo, he doesn't do anything. I mean, Figueredo is gassing out while doing nothing. I mean, maybe he can take down Silva and control him, but if he takes Silva down, Silva's more than comfortable off his back. So, yeah, I like to Silva here, 8,200. I think he's a pretty somewhat sneaky play. I don't think this fight's going to be overly high on, but I will have some to Silva. Not going to have a ton of Figueredo, honestly, but um, just a quick recap. Alexander Romanov, hoping Chase Sherman fights if he does. Romanov smash bot. Going to have a ton of them. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have a ton of Romanov, more than last week. Uh, Grant Dawson, 8,700, takedown, control time upside, sneaky finish. Same thing with Mazzani, takedown, control time, sneaky finish. And then Daniel De Silva, I think he has that early finish upside, and I'm just not sold on Little Figgy. So uh, those are my core plays for UFC Vegas 53. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave a like on your way out. Subscribe here to the MMA Engine, and we will talk to you very soon.